Welcome to Business Reporter's Future of Financial Services, Banking and Fintech Campaign. I'm Georgie Frost. The alternative investment ecosystem has witnessed substantial growth in recent years. But as the fund managers, institutional investors and service providers scale and expand across the globe, they face serious technological and regulatory challenges. Cybercrime is one of those challenges, and the financial services is the number one target for criminals. The clients of the fintech providers expect the highest level security. So in this latest episode of our three-part podcast series, we'll be exploring what alternative firms can do to secure their platforms as they continue to grow. Joining me to discuss this is Hank Bauner, CEO of Dynamo Software. Hank, welcome again. How much of a threat is cybercrime to the industry? Give me some facts and figures and why this industry? Yeah, cybercrime certainly is getting a lot of attention. And the reason is that it's uh, the pain is very real when it hits companies or organizations or uh, governments. And two, it's a lot of money and to, to rectify situations. And three, when things occur, it takes a lot of opportunity cost of time for folks to turn around and fix the problems that are now upon, say, uh, a a government or a business organization. Now, if you look at the size of this, uh, recent studies, there's a cybersecurity ventures study that has a number of eight trillion of impact in 2023. Those are big numbers in the trillions. Let's just think about that, about what's happening with cybersecurity. Now, more specifically, if you think about financial services, why are they targeting financial services? If you think about what financial services firms are managing, personal information, transactional details, private information going back and forth of when companies changed hands, all of that is very juicy information, but more importantly, it gives a cyber criminal a lot of leverage to cause problems and havoc with you if you're impacted. So these are some of the areas that we look at and say, hey, that that could be pretty expensive. And yes, an IBM study recently had the impact of each data breach of $5.7 million. So think about that. Something happens to you in over six month time period, you've got to write a check for $5 million out the door, maybe to the ransomware guys, but also your counselors, your litigation support, uh, all the advisors you have to have to respond, your technology providers, the costs add up fairly quickly. And one thing that is perpetuating the problem a little bit, especially for financial services firms, is oftentimes they pay the ransomware. Now, if you look at how many firms in the financial services world have been impacted, a lot of folks will, or a recent study, I should say, had 70% or so of financial executives say they've, they've been impacted by these kind of events. And when you look into those events, a large portion of them had actually paid ransomware. And so it's incumbent upon us as business owners and operators in the financial services space to spend a lot of time thinking through the motivations of cybercrime, what's causing the underpinnings to have it to keep going into the future and make sure we're properly configured and managed to best beat out the bad guys. Where are firms seeing the biggest challenges here? Yeah, I think the major point is it's across the whole ecosystem. If you're a financial services firm, you're thinking about, first, what's my customer experience look like? And in financial services, the number of products that have really come around in the last 10 years where folks can work on their phones, work on their laptops, different offerings, they want things at their fingertips. Well, as that customer expectation level increases, you've got to protect the organization because that means they're entering a lot more of their own information on devices that's personal information that you have to protect. So the first thing is customer expectations. The second we think about is at the application layer, at the app layer, what's happening with the applications that they're using and how those customers are entering information and accessing it. And so you've got to make sure If I look at the application, how are we capturing that information? Do I want to make sure that we're getting the right kind of information, too much information, and how we manage that experience? And third, when you look at the IT infrastructure that enables the application, which again enables the customer experience, 
That IT infrastructure is a big investment for most financial services firms. It certainly is here for us at Dynamo as we think about the different infrastructure components, both what we have in our main platform, the third party providers that we use, as well as outside service providers to make sure we have a portfolio approach of best technologies, best of breed capabilities to protect our, our IT infrastructure. And then finally, one of those areas that oftentimes gets overlooked is security and compliance, or in the security world, I should say, is compliance and regulation. So we think a lot about compliance, what the rules are, what we need to do to ensure the data is safe, if an incident were to occur, how do we handle it, what our planning looks like. So across those four points, customer experience, application layer, uh, IT infrastructure, and compliance, we think about the full spectrum of how you think about security. Hank, how can firms make their platforms more secure? Walk me through it, if you would. So the main points I think about, number one, do you have the internal team uh, educated and thinking about security at the forefront? Second, do you go to outside parties, outside service providers that may be specialists in a particular area of security and work with them? And third, are you taking the right kind of perspective on this? It's not just push a button. It's not just, oh, that's easy, it's security. Are you making it where it's a regular occurrence internally in terms of what you're talking about and how you're thinking about the footprint? So as I think across a, a number of parameters, number one, executive senior sponsorship. It's very important that the senior executives buy into and understand how important security is. Oftentimes I'll ask teams and other members, have you actually been through an incident before? Have you felt the pain? Do you understand when it gets ugly and the bad guys are coming at you or you're having security incident issues, what the best, uh, the best alternatives are and how to think through your responses to those? So executive sponsorship is key, particularly this perspective of it's not just to push a button, it's not just easy, it has to be a recurring big push. Uh, second, I like to take a holistic approach and think about what is our cyber plan? What have we put in in terms of redundancies? So if something were to occur or fall or break, what uh, comes back in uh, to help? And third, again, back to those outside providers because no one firm has all the answers to security. The market is moving too rapidly in too many different directions for folks to say, hey, one, one answer to everything. So you need to have an augmentation kind of, an, uh, of what your internal efforts are with this holistic approach. Third, I look at internal processes that we have in place, particularly like at Dynamo. Now we're a software company, so we spend a lot of time thinking about how are we coding? How does the coding software come into play? How is the data stored? Where do we put it? What about when the data is in transit? What about when it's at rest? All of these factors come into play. Now again, there's no one size fits all framework for each company, but you need to start asking those open-ended questions, those inquisitive ones of where might the bad guys try to go? Or what if something fails inside our infrastructure, how are we gonna respond? And the last point I like to highlight is regulatory and compliance. You just, you just gotta know what the regulatory rules are and what the compliance rules are in your local market or regional markets or national markets. And that takes time and effort. You know, inside of Dynamo, we have our general counsel involved, the senior executives involved, outside parties involved to help us think through what compliance areas are most important and relevant for us because, you know, not everything's relevant to Dynamo, but certain parts are more relevant for software providers. And if you're a financial services firm, for example, or an alternatives firm, investing capital, same kind of dynamics. What's most relevant on the regulatory compliance side for us? And it's very important you have those discussions sooner rather than later on a recurring basis. So the main point is, yeah, this is a, this is a big deal. And it's something you gotta take seriously. You work with your internal teams, your footprint with your outside teams. It's not one size fits all. And you certainly need the executive sponsors thinking about this so it just doesn't fall on the mid-level of IT security. Does it make a difference if you're an incumbent or you're a new firm in this space? Well, we think about that quite a bit. I've, I've been around growth companies and technology companies for, for two decades, and I've thought a lot about this. What's the main difference between a big established company with its arsenal of people and technologies they may have internally versus the newcomer? And there's challenges for each of them, and they can be a little bit different. For the incumbent, they have perhaps large teams to bear. They're larger organizations. 
They have security professionals on staff. They may have other technologies that they've put in place over the last five, 10, 15 years. And while certainly a benefit, uh, they also have the experience of running that, the challenge can come from keeping legacy systems up to date. The bad guys are always moving, the cyber criminals, the ways that people are trying to penetrate inside your networks, inside your organization, never stops. So you need to spend a lot of time looking at your legacy uh, infrastructure and legacy software applications and making sure that they're up to date, that the patches, maybe they're software patches or hardware that needs to be reinstalled or certificates that, uh, that you need to run to make sure they're current to make sure that there's no back way in for the bad guys to cause problems in your infrastructure. Now for the newcomers, it can be a little bit different of a challenge. Maybe they have all newer technology over the last two, four, five years. That's great. But what I found with a lot of small or medium sized companies is they're trying to build. They're trying to grow their customer base. They're trying to build their product set out and security might fall out of the list of the top 10 most important items. Maybe it's number 11, maybe it's number 12 because we've got to grow revenue. We've got to keep building on the software application or the hardware or the financial service offering that we're trying to provide to our customers. And in that means security doesn't get top billing. It gets pushed aside. Maybe there's not enough funding for it. So for each of these, I think there's challenges and the important piece and the main thing I think about is how do we keep security at the forefront? Are you thinking about it as a top five item on a recurring basis? Or is it just once a year that you come around to think about it when you have a security review or an annual review? And my, my uh, uh, advice and encouragement is to think about it very regularly like we do at Dynamo. You mentioned costs there, but if legacy tech is, is a big issue, do you have to get rid of it? Because surely that's expensive and disruptive and is going to push it even further down, I guess, the list of priorities if it's going to be expensive and disruptive. I mean, is it? Yeah, Georgie, that is a very expensive question for most companies because replacing legacy, number one, takes a lot of time, two, is very expensive, and three, is an enormous opportunity cost for your team. So what most companies do is come up with a plan to manage between the technologies that are legacy and are working and are quite good, maybe they're even 20 years old, database architectures, et cetera, they're hosting vast amounts of financial services information and doing it very well, but augmenting that with the newer technologies to help protect that data or to make it more available across, the, across their platform. So modernization is key and it's important, but it doesn't happen all at once. Most anybody in technology can tell you it's very hard to rip and replace entire legacy systems all at once. So you modernize in segments, in stages. You have much more control as, as to which areas you wanna focus on first, where might a customer be impacted, where might your suppliers be impacted, where might your products be impacted or your, or your employees and think through a prioritization of how to start morphing those and updating them as appropriate, or in a lot of cases, encapsulate, is the term we like to use, encapsulate legacy technology so that it stays in place, but you're able to reach out and pull the data in and out of the legacy system as needed. Because again, financial services firms have been capturing data across a number of years and, and recording your transactions, whether banking transactions, investment transactions, stock transactions, all important data that they need to keep records of. And it's important that if you do have new technologies, they can still work with those legacy platforms that hold a lot of that information. So I encourage our team as we think about this dynamic is to continue to encapsulate, continue to modernize, and continue to push your infrastructure forward. And it's an ongoing game. It's not solved easily and it takes time. You're right, it's an ongoing game. But cyber criminals hang always seem to be one step ahead though. How can you stay nimble in this environment? Well, number one, nimble is a good word. Uh, two is constant. You have to make sure that it's at the forefront of your brain and your mind and your approach. It's a constant push for how companies uh, think about cybersecurity and protect themselves and adapt. So what we like to do first is have weekly meetings amongst our team. Right? So we talk about security, I do, with our CTO regularly, our general counsel, our product teams, our developers, where we're having conversations about the newest adaptations, uh, what vendors we're seeing, and then the stage of the implementations. It's very important to have that conversation so you understand really where do you stand? 
Second, it's important to make sure on the technology side that as you bring in not only your own internal resources, but these third-party applications or services and technologies that can help you to understand where they are in implementation and go live and how they're interacting with your environment. It doesn't help to have new technologies that are throwing off alarm bells all the time that are false positives. It's very important to say, do we have a plan to start ascertain what's going on in our environment, how we're monitoring the environment, what is just an employee calling in to do something versus an outside party, and then managing the false positives versus the true threats. So all of those are important. Thirdly, I'd say organization. It's just really important that, you, that folks understand from the top and through the mid-level and to the lower ranks that security is incredibly important and it needs to be at the forefront. Now, some folks have gotten used to this, but as a leader, are you setting the tone that says this is important for us and these are the steps we're taking and then reinforcing that not only with items I mentioned, but other exercises like tabletop exercises, like practices, uh, anti-phishing type emails to see who's clicking on the bad emails, just as test runs to see how's it going. So it's an all-encompassing approach, all-encompassing approach, and certainly something we keep our eye on. As a leading fintech provider in the alt space, what is Dynamo doing around security, privacy, and compliance? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's at the forefront of my mind. Number one, it's important that you set the tone at the top that the employees hear that security matters. Now, why is that? If you don't set the, the tone at the top, folks think, yeah, that's never going to happen to me. That won't happen to us. That's somebody else's problem. I see this consistently with organizations across my career. So at Dynamo, we try to keep that at the forefront to say, here's the steps we're taking. Here are our plans across our infrastructure. Here are our plans working with third-party providers. And then here is the, the roadmap that we follow to make sure that as we deploy these technologies and go about our daily business with our customers and building software, that there's a true feeling uh, that security is important. Now I can tell you from a budget standpoint, yes, it takes up a considerable amount of our, our, our technology budget. It's a primary focus of our investors because they have broad experience across the globe. We have two private equity backers. And so security, they've seen just about everything about what the bad guys may be doing or cyber criminals, as well as the best ways to combat and keep current on uh, the best security mandates, protocols, and procedures. And so we take it very seriously. It's an ongoing battle, as I mentioned at the top. It's weekly, quarterly discussions. It's a board level discussion. And it's something we certainly put a lot of capital behind. Fantastic. Hank Bauner, CEO of Dynamo Software, thank you so much. For more episodes in this vodcast series and our previous series, head to the Dynamo website.